You might want to strap in, get a snack. Eight pages of Cinderella notes. Let's go. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. This is the rewatch series, and today I'm talking about Cinderella. Also, my snack of choice is peanut butter M&Ms. I know it's not really a snack, but it's all that's in this house. <laughs> my drink of choice is ice water because it's the best beverage. Cinderella is a 1950 animated theatrical release. It is directed by Clyde Geronimi, Hamilton Lusk, and Milford Jackson. Clyde Geronimi is best known for everything Disney, Peter Pan, Alice in Wonderland, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Hamilton Lusk I covered in the video about Pinocchio, and Wilford Jackson I covered in the video about Steamboat Willie. Both links will be in the description. Animators include Les Clark, Mark Davis, Norman Ferguson, Ollie Johnston, Milt Call, Ward Kimball, Eric Larson, John Lounsbury, Wolfgang Reitherman, and Frank Thomas. This is the first film to have all of, all nine of Disney's nine old men working on the film together. Like they have been at the studio, but this is the first film they've all worked on together, including like Norman Ferguson. He's not a nine old man, but he's working on it because there's 10 people I just listed. Mark Davis is the only one I haven't covered before. Mark Davis is best known for his Disney works, Cinderella, Peter Pan, Alice in Wonderland, all the classics, every animated Disney film there was pretty much up until the 70s. And everyone else I've covered before in a previous video, their links will be in the description. The film is edited by Donald Halliday. We haven't had an editor yet in the rewatch series. They're finally starting to get an editor for their films. I'm excited. And he's best known for all of his Disney work. He must've been the go-to editor, Peter Pan, Lady and the Tramp, Sword in the Stone, you name it, he probably worked on it. The score was composed by Oliver Wallace and Paul J. Smith, both of whom I've covered in previous videos. Their links will be in the description. The songs were written by Mac David, Jerry Livingston, and Al Hoffman, and they're pretty much best known for writing Cinderella songs. They are famous musicians, but in film it's Cinderella songs. The film was written by Bill P. Erdman Penner, Ted Sears, Winston Hibbler, Homer Brightman, Harry Reeves, Joe Rinaldi, and Ken Anderson. Any man that I listed that I haven't covered before is best known for their Disney work, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, The Adventures of Ichabod Crane and Mr. Toad, or Mr. Toad and Ichabod Crane. I don't remember the order of that. Wow, I'm a terrible Disney fan. Any of the animated classics, all of those men that I didn't list are best known for those. And then all the men that I have listed before, I've covered in previous videos, their links will be in the description. Cinderella is based off a book called Cinderella or the Little Glass Slipper by Charles Perrault, released in 1697. However, that book is based off of centuries of stories. So I decided I'm first gonna take us through the history of Cinderella, and then I will break down Cinderella by Charles Perrault to compare it to the movie. The earliest documented version of Cinderella is 7 BC in Greece. Rhodopis? Rhodopis? <laughs> I don't know. I'm the worst. I'm so sorry. But it's about a slave girl who marries the king of Egypt. While she's bathing, an eagle steals her sandal and takes it and flies it all the way to the king and drops it in his lap. And he's like, oh my gosh, this sandal is so beautiful. Whoever owns it must be just as beautiful. I want to marry her. So he tries to sandal on everybody and that's Cinderella. So in the earliest documented version of Cinderella we have, there's still the shoe aspect of it, which is crazy. And the important aspect of like, she goes from slaves to riches. Like it's insane, it's 7 BC. And that's the earliest documented, meaning it was written down and we have proof of it. It could have been being told for like centuries before that by word of mouth. It's, wow. There was an early French version in 12th century AD. Then there's a lot of different Asian versions of Cinderella. The Chinese version is Ye Shan and it was released in 860 or at least it's documented in 860 AD and it's the girl goes to a festival and loses her shoe and the king finds her and falls in love with her there's also something about a fish I don't know entirely what the fish is about but that's the Chinese version 13th century Japan has a version in which Cinderella takes refuge in a shrine and is reunited with her lover 1001 nights which is an Arabian book has a collection of different Cinderella stories. Some are male, some are female, some have happy endings, some have sad endings. It's fascinating. The story of Tam and Cam is a Vietnamese version of Cinderella and it's very similar to the Chinese version in which the mother has become a fish and then the stepmother kills the fish and the bones of that fish are magic and that's like the fairy godmother character. 
but obviously before the fairy godmother character was created. I'm about to say so many Italian words that I can't pronounce because I never took Italian, so I apologize now. I am so sorry. The first literary version of Cinderella was released in 1634 by Giambattista Basile in his Pentamarone, and the story was titled Cenerentola. Cenerentola, it means Cinderella. Cenerentola? Cenerentola. And it's about a prince's daughter named Zazola. And she convinces her father to remarry to this woman who's a lovely governess, but the second the governess has married the man, all of a sudden she has six children and all of these children bully Zazola. And so the father goes to this island and meets a fairy and the fairy gives a bunch of gifts to the father for Zazola. Zazola uses the gifts to go to a ball, goes to the ball, the king falls for her and she escapes him twice. And then the last time she loses her shoe and he says he'll marry the maiden who fits the shoe and then he tries the shoe on all the maidens and then he finds Azola and they marry. There's also another version of the story that's really famous that comes after Charles Perrault's version about 115 years later to be exact. And it's the Brothers Grimm version. I feel like a lot of people think the Cinderella that Disney made is based off the Brothers Grimm version and that's not actually true. It's based off of the 1697 Charles Perrault version, not the 1812 version by the Brothers Grimm. The Brothers Grimm one is the one where like, the stepsister cuts off her toes, the other stepsister cuts off her heel. Cinderella goes to the ball, like the big celebration, three different nights. And the third night, the stairway is covered in pitch. So that's why she loses her shoe. And then he tries the shoe on the stepsister and he falls for it and he's like, wait, no. And then he step, he falls for the next stepsister and says, wait, no. And then when he's putting the shoe on Aschenputtel, that's her name in German, uh, he recognizes her as being the girl who he's been fawning over the last, like, you know, the three days he was dancing with her. And that's kind of the differences with that. And that's the Brothers Grimm version. And in 1819, there was a coda added to Cinderella in which at the wedding, the stepsisters were bridesmaids. And doves fly in and strike the sisters blind. As I've said many times at this point, this movie was based off of Cendrillon. Cinderella by Charles Perrault, released in 1697. Shall we compare? A widower marries a haughty woman with two daughters equally vain and selfish. His daughter is a kind and sweet girl who is forced to serve the step family day and night. She curls up by the fire at night to stay warm and often wakes up with cinders on her face, giving her the mocking name Cinderella. She doesn't tell her father for he would have scolded her. What kind of messed up dad? The prince invites all young maidens to a ball, hoping to choose a wife. The stepsisters tease Cinderella, claiming maids aren't allowed at the ball. Cinderella cries as her stepsisters leave for the ball, but she's greeted by her fairy godmother. Fairy godmother transforms Cinderella, the pumpkin, mice, a rat, and lizards into everything Cinderella needs to be who she was by birth. Her last touch is a delicate pair of glass slippers and tells Cinderella to enjoy the ball, but warns against a midnight curfew for the spell. Cinderella entrances everyone at the ball and remembers to leave before midnight. What? She leaves, she left. What's going on? It's getting different. Another ball is held the next evening and Cinderella attends with her godmother's help. The prince is infatuated with Cinderella and her him. So this is love. She leaves at the last stroke of midnight and loses her shoe. Outside she is turned back into a country girl and the guards don't find her. The prince vows to find Cinderella and Cinderella keeps the other shoe. All the women in the kingdom must try on the shoe and at Cinderella's home, the stepsisters try in vain to get the prince to fall for them. Cinderella asks if she may try the shoe and her stepsisters taunt her. The slipper fits and Cinderella shows the other slipper. Her step family begs for forgiveness and Cinderella agrees. She always wanted her stepfamily to love her. Cinderella marries the prince and the stepsisters marry two handsome gentlemen of the court. The end. First of all, the dad's alive in the book and is apparently just neglectful. <laughs> Rude. Second, she goes to the palace twice. That's the biggest differences from Charles Perrault's version and Disney's version, but for the most part, they're really similar. The film stars Eileen Woods, Eleanor Audley, Verna Felton, Rhoda Williams, Lucille Bliss, James McDonald, Lucille Williams, Louis Von Ruten, 
William Phipps and Mike Douglas. Eileen Woods plays Cinderella and is best known for On Stage Everybody, The Alan Young Show, and this. Eleanor Audley plays Lady Tremaine and is best known for The Man from Uncle, Front Row Center, Sleeping Beauty, and this. Verna Felton plays Fairy Godmother and she is a very famous Disney voice. She's been in Sleeping Beauty, Alice in Wonderland, The Jungle Book, etc. She actually died on the exact same day Walt Disney did. Rhoda Williams plays Drizella and is best known for Space Master X7, The Heart is a Rebel, Police Story, and this. Lucille Bliss plays Anastasia and is best known for The Secret of Nim, Robots, Assassination, and this. James McDonald plays Jack and Gus Gus and I covered him in the video about the rescuers. The link will be in the description. Lucille Williams plays Perla and is best known for Halfway to Heaven, Sally Shoulders, Traveling Husbands, and this. Louis Van Rooten plays the King and the Grand Duke and he's best known for The Secret of St. Ives, Detective Story, Two Years Before the Mast, and this. William Phipps plays the speaking voice of Prince Charming and he is best known for The War of the Worlds, Catwoman of the Moon, Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey, and this. Mike Douglas is the singing voice of Prince Charming and he's best known for The Mike Douglas Show, Bugsy, The Incredible Shrinking Woman, and this. I don't know how much watching time this has been, but I have been filming for an hour and 26 minutes and we're only halfway through page three. In 1922, Walt Disney made a laughogram about Cinderella. This is before Silly Symphonies existed, so laughogram was first. And he wrote, and like they did it, and it's like seven minutes, it's cute, I've watched it. Um, it's not amazing, but it is modern, so she's in a 1920s flapper dress, which is so fun. She's brunette, which is crazy because I just like, she's blonde. Like everyone just knows she's blonde now because of this movie, but anyway, in 1933, they tried to make a silly symphony, but it was too complicated. The story was too complicated, so people started suggesting it as a feature. And in 1938, Al Perkins wrote a 14-page outline. Two years after that, another treatment was written, and it was very faithful to Charles Perrault's story, but very different than the movie we see today. And it included Cinderella getting imprisoned. Then in 1943, Joe Grant and Dick Humor were hired to work on it. Then in 1945, Maurice Rapp was hired to write it. And he made Cinderella a really active character. He gave her until midnight and then it was up to her. And then he even made her stand up to the step family, which no one took seriously, I guess. In 1946, Walt held three different story meetings. So by early 1947, he had three different treatments. By May 1947, the rough storyboarding process had begun. Bank debt from Fun and Fancy Free was $4.2 million. So Walt wanted to return to feature animation because from Bambi until Cinderella, which is a big time gap. Actually, Bambi's 1942 and Cinderella's 1950. So all of those years, they started doing live action films to try and make money. The Reluctant Dragon, so good, highly recommend. Uh, you know, and then they were doing short compilation movies, Saludos Amigos, The Three Caballeros, Fun and Fancy Free, Melody Time. All of those movies took place in between Bambi and Cinderella. And Walt wanted to return to feature animation. Peter Pan and Alice in Wonderland and Cinderella were all in pre-production at that time. And he thought Cinderella was the warmest story. He you know, was thinking we need another princess. So he green lit Cinderella. Alice in Wonderland was technically in production at the same time and the animators would compete to see who could finish first. And in 1948, Cinderella was further along. So Walt fast tracked that film to become the first feature from Disney since Bambi. In the late forties during production of Cinderella, well, part of the production because the production of Cinderella obviously takes a lot longer than live action films. Walt was in London on the set of Treasure Island. Good movie. Billy Driscoll. Wow. And they would have to mail questions or different sequences to Walt and wait a really long time to hear back from him. So they would have to make their own decisions kind of. And then Walt would send notes and they would be like, oh my gosh, we have to undo all this work. And it was really frustrating, but also gave them a lot of independence, which was a lot of fun. And then Walt would come back and they'd have meetings and he would just be like, okay, this has got to change, but this is good. And you know, all of that could have been, it was probably so intense. They auditioned 300 different girls to be Cinderella and could not find the right one. Eileen Woods was friends with Mac David, Jerry Levinson and Al Hoffman. And they asked her to sing the demo versions of the songs just so they could show everyone what the songs were supposed to sound like. And when they went in to show Walt what the songs were supposed to sound like, 
he got he started listening to the song and got lost in Eileen's voice and said that's her that's my Cinderella get her in this office and then Eileen had a meeting like the next day with Walt Disney went in the office he talked with her a little bit and then said how would you like to be Cinderella and she was like yes please and that is how that happened the demo versions have Eileen Woods singing them they are magical we will get there in order to make the film quickly they had to use a lot of live action reference footage which of course the animators felt were was very constricting but it was in the essence of saving money and moving quickly so they don't specifically trace the live action footage they use it as a reference and like exaggerate that footage so it just helps the entire animating process animating process why did i say it like that i don't know also cinderella had a ton of different designs she had braids she had a long neck they couldn't figure out what to do with her for a while and then we got the cinderella we know and love and mark davis animated her dress changing and that was Walt's favorite piece of animation. Production finished in October of 1949 and it was released in February of 1950. It was also re-released in 57, 65, 73, 81, and 87. The film was a huge critical success. People loved it. They thought if it wasn't his best, it was close to it. And the character of Cinderella received a little bit of flack, which I don't know why. I stay with my girl Cinderella. She's great. But otherwise the film was a smash hit. Off a $2.8 million budget, it made $8 million. This helped Disney make more films, start his own distribution company, enter TV, start Disneyland, and start Disney World. Okay, great. It was nominated for three Academy Awards, Best Original Score, Best Sound, and Best Song. It lost all three of them. It was selected for preservation in 2018. Cinderella 2 and Cinderella 3 exist, 2002 and 2007 respectively, and a live action adaptation was released in 2015. It's one of my favorite movies ever. I can't wait to get there. As I'm sure you saw in the thumbnail, We on the DVD released in 2005, Special Edition, Platinum Edition, Platinum Edition, and I watched everything for you. Let's go over it. Disc 1 has two bonus features if you will the first being cinderella stories presented by espn sports and it's a bunch of cinderella sports stories i have a list of them i did not watch them all because i don't care <laughs> i mean cinderella sports stories are great but i wasn't gonna watch them all here's a list of them those are for you great the second thing was called music and more and it's two music videos the first being a dream is a wish your heart makes cover by the disney channel stars which was a bop if you know what that music video is you know what that music video is okay raven simone ricky allman aj we are here ali mashaka we are here for all of them i love it the other music video was every girl can be a princess from some princess show i think it was cute. Disc two starts with deleted scenes, two deleted scenes to be exact, and they're each deleted songs in reality or or different versions of song. You'll see. The first one is called the Cinderella Work Song before the version that the mice sing. And it was Cinderella singing it. And it's just after Lady Tremaine gives her all the work to do and Cinderella sings about how there's too much work to do and she wishes she could multiply herself into like a regiment to get all of it done so she can work on her dress for the ball. Uh, it's an okay song. Out of all the songs that are deleted or that weren't like never just made it, um, it's my least favorite. <laughs> so the second scene is called Dancing on a Cloud with You and it was supposed to be like So This Is Love's scene. It's when the Prince is dancing with Cinderella and Disney so desperately wanted a prince and princess dancing in the clouds and he doesn't get to realize this dream until Sleeping Beauty. But the storyboards and rough animation and the song are stunning. I got goosebumps listening to the song because the demo version is Eileen Woods. So Eileen Woods is singing Dancing on a Cloud with you with whoever was singing the princess part and it is beautiful i got goosebumps i like i love so this is love it's my favorite song from the movie and dancing on a cloud with you is stunning please look it up the next section on disc two is called music and more and this is actually a really jam packed bonus features section the first is cinderella and perry como and it's just audio of eileen woods and a couple other females to help sing appearing on the perry como show 
and they do like a sh really 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 shortened version of the movie and Eileen sings a lot and then causes some laughs at the end and then Donald Duck comes out at the end to end all of it. It was really adorable. Next was Cinderella's title song which was just the original demo version of Cinderella's title song. It was nice to like actually fully be able to hear what they say. It was awesome. The next section is unused songs and there are seven unused songs. The first being Sing a Little Dream a Little and it's just about how you can make it through life by singing and dreaming. The next song is I'm in the Middle of a Muddle which I think is an even earlier version of the Cinderella work song because it can it talks about how much work she has to do etc etc. Next was the mouse song which just discusses what mice should wear and like the mice sing it but I don't know why it talks about what mice should wear. Next was the dress my mother wore. Oh my word, I got goosebumps listening to the song. I got teary listening to the song. It is such a touching and beautiful song. Part of me is a little sad. It's not in the movie, but I, I get it. I get why it's not in the movie. But she just sings about the dress that her mother wore and how it's tattered and old, but nothing can compare to the dress my mother wore. Like it. And it's Eileen Wood singing it, so I can just like be placed right and see it in the movie and-, and oh, ooh, ee. The next one is Dancing on a Cloud, but I talked about that for a deleted scene, so we're just gonna skip over that one and go to I Left My Heart at the Ball, which is also an amazing song, and it's about just that, Cinderella singing about how she left her heart with the prince back at the ball. And uh, again, it's Eileen Wood singing the demo, so it's everything. <laughs> the last song was called The Face That I See in the Night, and it was a song for the prince and I love it and I'm so sad the prince didn't get a solo song. That would have been so cool and it's really good. That was the last unused song. I so highly recommend you guys look up these songs and listen to them because they are magical and just like enhanced my love for Cinderella, which I didn't think was possible because I really love Cinderella. The next section was radio programs, meaning advertisements slash interviews. There were three of them, the first being the village store excerpt and it's Eileen Woods being interviewed and she talks about how she was cast in the film and how that was kind of a Cinderella moment and then she sings a little bit. The next was Gulf Oil Presents, which was the exact same thing. Like, I mean, they're a little bit different, but it's all the exact same thing. She tells her little Cinderella story, how she got casted and then she sings. And then the last is Scouting the Stars where she does the same thing. She talks about her kid. She's 22 and has a kid and she just, tells her Cinderella story about how she like became a star in Cinderella and sings. Um, the interviews were 1948, 1950, and 1950. The next section on disc two is called Games and Activities, of which there are three. The first is House of Royalty, in which Sally from Mike's super short show, Allison Stoner, teaches us how to look, live, and act like a princess. She does so by meeting with a designer, meeting with the extreme makeover, home edition people and meeting with an actual princess. It's intense. Also, it is so cheesy. It's like very late 90s, early 2000s cheesy. Like picture the scene in Lizzie McGuire movie, in the Lizzie McGuire movie, where Lizzie gets to try on all those clothes as Isabella, but like a million times cheesier than that. <laughs> Next was the Royal Life Design Studio and it told me to put it in the DVD-ROM part of my computer which technically it was, but I still couldn't play the game. Love that for me. And it was, you get to design your own palace, you get to design a ball gown, and you get to design a room, and you like can put your face on the princess wearing the ball gown. I really wanted to do it so I could have my face on a princess wearing a ball gown, but uh, it wasn't working in my computer, so. The last part of games and activities is the princess pajama jam, where it's just a woman telling you to do a bunch of different dance moves that the princesses do, you don't see this woman. You just see the princesses technically doing some kind of dance move. It was really bad. The next section on disc two is Backstage Disney, which starts with From Rags to Riches, The Making of Cinderella. They talk about how if Cinderella wasn't successful, that probably would have been the end of Disney, which is so sad I wouldn't be sitting here today. So thank you, Cinderella, for that. They talk about the animators and what animators got to animate what. Like Ward Kimball hated being like constricted, so he definitely, didn't want to animate any of the people. <laughs> so he got to animate Lucifer and the mice and he had so much fun with that. And then Mark Davis did the dress transformation and it was like Walt's favorite. Everyone talks about that. It's a really big deal. Then they talk about the voices. They had an interview with Eileen and Mike. Eileen kind of tells her story again. Mike talks about how he was casted as the singing voice and then spoke. And they were all like, um, 
where are you from? And he said, Chicago. And they go, yeah, we can't use you for the speaking voice. <laughs> so that's how that happened. <laughs> and then they talk about the music, which is obviously so important and how the songs became hits and they didn't write them to become hits on the charts. They wrote them for the movie, but they became hits. It was a big deal. And then they talk about the overdubbing process, which is so awesome. So when Cinderella is singing Sing Sweet Nightingale and her different reflections come up in the different bubbles it comes the most is four bubbles on the screen. She is overdubbed to sing with herself in different harmony, which is not a big deal now. People do it all the time now, but then it was a very new process. And what was like, I see one bubble coming up and you hear her singing and I see another, another bubble come up and you hear her singing twice. And everyone was like, oh my gosh, you want to overdub it? Like it was so intense. And it was such a big deal. And that's one of my favorite pieces of animation and one of my favorite like moments in the film, just because the harmonies are so beautiful to hear Eileen singing with herself. That was so cool. And then the rest of the making of talked about how Walt was his own Cinderella story, the studio was its own Cinderella story, and Cinderella's movie was its own Cinderella story. Next was the Cinderella that almost was, which basically are clips from those story meetings that I've talked about now in Pinocchio and I think Dumbo and Bambi. The Audio clips from the story meeting obviously weren't real audio clips. They reenacted them, but the words are verbatim what Walt and all the others said. They were interesting. It was fun to hear what could have potentially happened in Cinderella. Like there was a lot of stuff about the prince. There was one time in one draft, they had the seeing the prince early on in the script and it looks like he's about to hunt a deer, but then like he stops and him and the deer are friends. And there's another one where they potentially meet in the forest, him and Cinderella. And then there was a whole segment with a music teacher called LeFouf, who was like frustrated with Anastasia and Drizella. So a lot got cut or just moved around. And it was really interesting to hear all of that in the Cinderella that almost was. The next section was called From Walt's Table, a tribute to Disney's Nine Old Men. And it was basically nine modern animators who all still, I think, work at Disney. Maybe not all of them, but Glenn Keane, Andreas Deha, Brad Bird, John Musker, Ron Clements were all at this table talking about being mentored by the nine old men and how different the nine old men were. And it was such a fascinating conversation. I don't really have anything to report per se about the conversation, but I was just so invested in listening to them talk about these animators and just talk about their different experiences on being inspired and how Eric Larson or Milt Call, like Milt Call was so strict. He'd like, you'd bring it to him and he'd be like, yeah, no, you're not even trying. Like he was one of those guys. And it, it was such a fascinating conversation. If you can have any kind of access to this, I would say try to find and watching it. What? <laughs> Who am I? Try finding it and watching it because it was really interesting. I just found myself so invested in the conversation, but there was no like information about Cinderella that I haven't already given you. The next section was the art of Mary Blair. And I loved this section because I learned a lot. I didn't know who Mary Blair was and now I do. And I'm really happy I do. Mary Blair was a concept artist at Disney and she was such a huge influence. All of the concept art for Cinderella is pretty much Mary Blair and they are stunning pieces of art, stunning pieces of art. Like the dancing on a cloud sequence stuff that I showed earlier, all of the pretty sparkly clouds like pieces are Mary Blair art. And I want those hanging in my house. Like when I was watching that, I was like, this artwork is so beautiful. I just like want it in my home. Like, can I please buy this Mary Blair? And she left for a while, but then Disney called her and wanted her to design everything for It's a Small World. And it's so funny because when I was watching this whole segment about her before it got to the part where she designed It's a Small World, there was some art stuff that I was like, wow, this really reminds me of It's a Small World at Disney. And then it talks about how she was brought back to do all the design for It's a Small World. And she had so much fun and it's obviously such an iconic ride and it's all Mary Blair. The next six sections were really quick. So I think I'm just gonna try and cover them in the same section, like really quick. First was the storyboard comparison to the film. So it shows the first six minutes of Cinderella compared to its storyboard. That is so cool. I'm such a geek for that stuff. I really liked that. The next section is the Cinderella gallery. So it shows a bunch of rough artwork, different character sheets, production stills, etc., etc. Then it's the 1922 laughogram, which I said earlier in the video that I watched and you guys can probably find it on YouTube. Honestly, it's cute. Seven minutes. It's just like the story of Cinderella in the 1920s in a laughogram format where 
against music. And then there's a segment from the Mickey Mouse Club where Helene Stanley, who did, I'm pretty sure the live action, like footage reference stuff for Cinderella comes and like sings the Cinderella work song in a much deeper voice than Eileen Woods and like does this whole performance for the Mickey Mouse Club. It was interesting. I don't know. I'm not here to judge, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to judge. The next was theatrical trailers, which was just a bunch of trailers for Cinderella. And the last was how to get involved. And it was just this short clip about like how Disney is involved with like make a wish and a bunch of other similar charities. On IMDb, there were a ton of trivia and goofs, but again, I don't know if these are true or not. So I will put the link in the description and you take them with a grain of salt. In my original video for Cinderella, link in the description, I discuss how I love So This Is Love, still true, <laughs> you'll see and how I love all the characters. The step family is awful and I hate them. <laughs> I love the friendship between Cinderella and all the animals. It's so touching. I love how the prince gets to choose whoever he wants. Class doesn't matter. The king just wants grandbabies. Like he don't care. And I love that. I love that Cinderella has no idea who the prince is. This is all stuff I said in my original video. And I definitely have some new notes. I love this movie. I always have, but I think the older I get, the more I fall in love with Cinderella, the more she starts to climb up to my favorite princess. Since I was little, Ariel has always been my favorite princess, but I don't know, man. Cinderella is right there. I love this movie so much. And this time, this movie just hit me right in the feels. I've always been invested in this movie when I watch it. I've never watched it like, you know, cause I, I'm bored and then I don't pay attention to it. I've never really done that. But for some reason this time, I was watching it with such an intensity that all of the emotion really affected me. I was just like overwhelmed with emotion while watching this movie. The first scene that really got me was when the stepsisters are ripping Cinderella's dress apart. The animation, I, I don't know what was different this time, but I feel like I just paid so much closer attention to Cinderella's reaction while they're ripping this. I feel like it's easy to get distracted by them ripping and what they're saying, but you don't pay attention to her face and her face is so sad. It was like, I got so teary. I didn't cry, but I got so teary when her clothes are being ripped off of her and the, the background becomes red. It's just so effective. and really emotional, okay? And I was really affected. And then, So This Is Love started, literally her hums. And I was crying. From beginning of So This Is Love to the end of So This Is Love, I was crying. I love that song. I really, really love that song. I always have, it's like so enchanting to me, but I've never cried watching Cinderella, at least the animated one. I've probably cried watching the live action one a few times, but I have never cried watching the animated Cinderella and I was just a mess during So This Is Love. So I don't know what that was about. And then the other time that completely destroyed me because I was paying extra close attention, I guess, is when Lady Tremaine locks Cinderella in her room toward the end of the film. I noticed that you only see Cinderella try to pull once and then the rest of the time you're on the mice and on Lady Tremaine going down the stairs. But Eileen Woods' voice performance, when she's begging, she's, please, please let me out, please let me out. Her performance made me teary. I was so emotional. I was like, whoa, Eileen Woods come in hard and fast with the beautiful performance I was blown away. I don't, I think that's another thing I just never paid attention to because I'm always distracted by Lady Tremaine going down the stairs after locking her in and my running after her. And I think I've just always been distracted by that. And this time I really like, I heard Cinderella begging and it destroyed me because I was already emotional. Another thing I've never noticed in any other watch through is exactly how many shots of feet there are. I know there's the foreshadowing scene where like she loses her little like flat shoe on the stairs when she's taking breakfast up 
to the step family and that's like a cute little like haha she loses her shoe she's gonna lose her shoe later like i know that's a haha foreshadowing moment but because so much of the movie takes place with the mice and from the mice's mm, mice's point of view i don't know you see a lot of Cinderella's feet and other people's feet regardless because of how much movie takes place at that level. And you also see close-ups of her hands and she just like different times where she seems so big because you're from the moist, moises, mice, mice point of view. I can't speak anymore. I've been doing this so long. That is everything I have for Cinderella. We made it eight pages, you guys. I love this movie. I am re-rating it. I don't think I gave it a 10 last time. If I did, good on me. But this time I'm giving it a 10. I was so affected in every way, shape, and form during this movie. I felt extreme joy. I felt extreme sadness. And it was magical. It's the only word I have for this film. Um, I'm definitely giving it 10 glass slippers out of 10. Cinderella's original movie count is... Was. I don't know whatever. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter and you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Until next time, comment, subscribe, and I'm not sure if you are, so you do, and definitely don't be Lady Tremaine about it. <laughs> Mark David, not Mac David. Oh, Mac David. Mac David. Oh, I'll be. The st <clears throat> store. The score. <laughs> the store. A widow, 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 <laughs> already it's the first line. Okay, a widower. Oh, I can't say widower. A widower, a widower, a widower, a widower, a widower, a widower. A man with a dead wife and two stepped up. I just spit so bad. The steptis, steptisters. The steptisters. Mice, a rat. Cinderella attends with her god's, god's mothers. All the window, Wyndham. Where'd it go?